Hi, everyone. <laughs> That's if anyone's watching. All right, let's have a look. Let me get my microphone right here. A little bit of rustling there. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to avoid. With my apron. Okay, so I'm gonna have some fun. I'm gonna show you how I make um, some of my props. I know a lot of people always ask me, you know, how did you make that? What, you know, what, what was it? Was it a digital? Was it this? Was it that? And uh, I always have a lot of fun trying to come up with my concepts and my ideas. So if you watched my live yesterday, uh, I walked, walked you through a few of my um, award images from the past and, and talked a little bit about how I created them as single captures and the inspiration behind them. So today I thought with prop making, I'll show you how I create some of the different um, props that I've I've actually made in the past. So I've already started here so that I didn't take up too much of your time today. Um, but before we get starting, started with our craft and making a mess, <laughs> and you're watching me in Struggle Street um, to make these, I want to I want to show you a, a couple more photos that I've used this same technique. So I'm using pool noodles. Um, these are like two dollars. From, I buy them from Kmart, you can get them from um, you know, the cheap shops, things like that, but they're literally just a bit of foam. They're really lightweight. They're hollow in the middle uh, that you can see. And they're nice and long. They're easy to sort of maneuver and make things out of, but more importantly, they are very, very soft. Um, if you are going to have a baby um, come into contact with any of them. Hello, Silver Sister. That's Shona. Hello, Hi, Shona. Shona. <laughs> Do you know, I was thinking the other day, Shona, I don't know about you, but being in, you know, this lockdown and having these restrictions in place, it's going to be a while before we get to have our hair cut. Don't talk about haircuts. <laughs> so it could be, uh, we could all come out of this with completely new looks. It's going to be fun anyway. Um, so yeah, getting back to this, slightly sidetracked. Um, I'm going to use pool noodles. I have got some gaff tape, amazing gaff tape. Um, but whenever I'm making a prop, I always buy a lot of spares. So I had a couple of these left over from my last DIY project. And I'm going to show you, um, I've got one of them actually behind the, the, uh, the table here, which I'll show you in a minute, but we'll show you the photo. And um, I've also got my plaster strips. So this is just, um, it's a roll of plaster that you can buy from any art and craft store. But it's the same sort of stuff that if you break an arm or a leg, they wrap you up in. Um, and set it. So I'm going to use that as well. And I've got a bowl of warm water over here. I've already cut those into strips. Um, I've got wire if I need it. I've got a few bits and pieces here if I need it. But um, yeah, this is what I'm, I'm going to make. And we're going to make a, a love heart bowl and I'm going to plaster it. <laughs> okay. It's going to be fun. Alrighty. Let me um, show you. Before we do kick off, I'm just going to do a quick battery change because all of a sudden we've gone from full power on one of our packs to nothing. Oh, which one? Mine or...? Mine here. Okay. We're back. Okay, while Garrett was changing those batteries, I thought I'd just pop another little layer on here. Now, Garrett's got some photos there loaded on the screen. I'm just going to show you this one here. Can you talk us through this one and how you made it? Okay, so this was, this is probably my most recent um, creation and I made it for a beautiful family that welcomed a baby girl into their lives. So I wanted to make something special for them based around that story, which we'll deconstruct in another live, um, similar to what we did yesterday. But I thought a lot of people asked me how I made this. Um, I won't talk about so much the story at the moment, but I do want to show you the actual prop and how big it is. It is huge. And I made it out of pool noodles, out of polystyrene, let me set it up here. Yeah. All right, so the idea behind this was to create something <laughs> that was about their family. 
Oh, there's a photo. <laughs> <laughs> and um, these are polystyrene heads. And I've used a lot of wire, I've used a lot of tape under here where it's where we placed the baby because this was a single catcher. Um, there's actually a bowl in here, but I, I first did this based on a drawing and then I needed to source the materials to make it. And I thought pool noodles are going to be perfect because I can shape them um, in the shape that obviously that I want and um, and then use the plaster to help hold it together, but to give it that sculpture kind of look. So you can see, if we start at the inside head here, if you follow the line around, it comes all the way around up to our first head, our, sorry, our second head, and then it continues to come around, and it goes all the way around to the top head, so it's that circle of life um, and, that, and that bringing family together. So when it came to finding the right materials, um, this method that I'm going to use to make the heart was the perfect way to do it. All right, Garrett's got another one there to show you. To bring it, um... Okay, so this was another one for another family. And underneath the the... the the feathers, I almost called them leaves, <laughs> underneath the feathers um, are pool noodles. So to create that shape, uh, I needed to obviously um, have something that I could mould and then raise up to create the depth as well. So I cut out a really big sheet of cardboard in the shape underneath to create the wings. And then I stuck the pool noodles around the outside um, I made the bowl, the heart bowl, out of paper mache actually, chicken wire and paper mache. We don't need to show that. That's another crafting day. Um, and then the feathers are actually just pieces of plain white A4 paper that I cut and creased and stuck down and then I, I spray painted it. Um, but that's a little creepy for me. Oh well, you know what, if you understood the story, <laughs> you might get it. But um, I was actually really proud of that particular photo because um, it recently scored a perfect score of 100 at WPPI and it was the only, only print that did out of the whole competition, which was absolutely amazing. And then it went on to win the grand award because of the storytelling nature behind it. So when you actually understand the story, it's not so creepy. But yeah, this is just me showing you how I make stuff and come up with different concepts and ideas. So yeah, the, the twin one, that particular prop was made specially for that shoot and hasn't been used again since. And that's why I love using things like this because when I'm making one-off pieces, I have to be really careful about my budget. I've got to um, obviously allocate certain funds to, to different things to make whatever it is that I need. And if I'm only charging X amount of dollars for things like that, but I'm spending more that I'm not going to make any money on that. So I'm always really careful about the way that I um, select the materials. Um, also, you know, not just to keep it in budget, but make sure that it's safe and secure and obviously easy to use and easy to make. All right, the, um, the next picture we're gonna show you is my surrogacy symbol. So uh, this was for a beautiful family. I had photographed their first baby three years prior to making this and I know that they went through a lot, of, um, a lot of struggles to have their first baby. And anyway, I ended up photographing her when she was 10 weeks old because she was born so early. And when it came time to wanting their second baby, they ended up having to have a surrogate for that. So when they contacted me, they asked me to photograph their birth, which I went along. Um, actually was in the hospital for 18 hours with them, God bless, because there was a few complications. So when I knew they were coming in for their newborn shoot, I wanted to create something that was really special and meaningful for them. So I started to, to research and look up the, the surrogacy symbol and I found this particular symbol. Um, it was actually on a necklace and I thought I could make that. So I made that out of pool noodles. And what you can't see in that photograph is that there was actually a fishing line um, attached to the very top of it and then that was secured above it to help hold that structure in place. So that's how I um, was able to keep that upright and create a single capture image out of that and have the actual baby in there. So pool noodles for the win and wire and things like that. We've got a few questions there. Is there a colour version of the feather shoot? Yes. 
There is, but um, I made it with intention for a black and white image. I wanted it to be really moody and I wanted the babies to be the main hero of the shot but also just be framed and surrounded by that heart and wings. So yeah, there is, there is one out there but um, that's for the family. I chose to share the, the black and white one and um, that's the one I love. Alrighty, I'm going to make another heart here and then we're going to stick them together. So you could make just one and then you could continue to plaster around this or I'm going to give you a great idea. Go onto Pinterest and have a look, search up DIY wreaths or garlands and there are some amazing ways on how you can decorate things like this to create something new. So this could be your base and then you could potentially do so many different things with this. I know I've got here, give me two seconds. I've got a bit of material, so even if you see, you know, obviously you can see through this bit of material, but yeah, if you were to stretch out some fabric and then place a baby in there, you're going to get that perfect shape. Um, over the top of it, you can um, tear bits of fabric off, use some hessian, you could um, create some beautiful flowers around the outside. The thing is, you just have to be really careful that when you are placing a baby inside anything, whatever you stick to the outside, if they are going to come into contact with it, you need to make sure that it's not going to be um, scratchy, it's not going to cause any um, you know, damage, potential damage to the baby in terms of um, it being um, rough or, I suppose... Abrasive. Yes, that's a good word. Abrasive, yeah. Right. Now, this is a bit of an interesting process making this particular heart. But yeah, the pool noodles, um, I found that the actual length of these and then cut in half is the perfect shape for it. And you don't have to, to trim any of it. Um, you can keep it as is. So what I do is I just cut them in half, right down the middle. If we've got any questions, please pop them into the comments. Let me know where you guys are watching from. We do have a question here from Drew. He's curious about textures. Wah, wah, wah. What sort of textures? Just textures. Okay, so textures that you pop into, um, onto a photograph digitally or texture that you may use in terms of material? Is that the type of question? Pop that back into the comments and then I can answer it a little better for you. But yeah, do you know what? Even if you guys want to set me a challenge to make something, I would love to do that. If you've got some idea, oh, I'm game. <laughs> Gareth's like, oh, he's got this look on his oh. face. He's like, no, don't give the woman ideas. Can you just use duct tape for those of us who are not that crafty? Like Absolutely. This is what I'm using, gaff tape, which is just that material, really sticky tape, and it's very, very strong. And that's what's going to hold your shape in, in place. So I could, if I wanted to, I could cut this to bring it together depending on how I wanted to shape my heart. But I'm going to go with the really easy option here. And you can see I've got one piece that comes around and it goes to the bottom and then the other piece sits in just a bit higher and it comes around and it goes to there. So you um, cut the, the two pieces the same length to be able to do that. And you may need an extra set of hands for this. I'm going to use some clamps here to help hold my um, pieces in place while I do this because it's not the easiest process. If I come back here, Garrett, is that all right while I'm taping? Yeah, I, can, I can come over to you. But yeah, this is great. If you've got kids at home, you get them involved in some of this sort of stuff. You could um, have a whole heap of new props by the time you are ready to, to start shooting again. But yeah, wire does work really well as well. But I always start with the top of, top of the heart first. And 
what I need to be careful of when I'm putting the gaff tape around is that I keep that nice point there and I keep this edge nice and clean as well. So I'm just going to come around the outside here, stick it down to that side and then give it a really good, whoops, give it a really good pull as I come around here. There we go. I'm just going to anchor this piece here now so it doesn't come unstuck. And you will end up having to use quite a bit of tape to keep this main point in place. But the, the plaster is what's going to give it that beautiful shape. Okay, so Drew has come back. Okay. Is there a texture, would you suggest, with the overlay material or perhaps some to avoid? Okay, so if you're going to have like a type of material that goes across, um, or for example, if I'm using this plaster and I'm going to obviously wet it and then I'm going to have to wait for it to dry, it is going to create a texture on the outside of this particular prop. I just need to make sure that when I put a baby in here, that I'm lining it with something that's nice and soft, that it's not going to come into contact with that harder, sort of rougher textured surface. And if I'm putting um, like a hessian over the top of it, then again, I'm going to have to line it with something so the baby doesn't come into to contact because the hessian, like a burlap, it can be kind of scratchy and itchy as well. So I always just make sure that I put a soft material between the baby and the hard or rough surface of anything that I'm using. Um, that's what it's all about. Uh, Bianca said Kelly the surrogacy image was amazing. Oh, Can you talk you. about it more? I think we will be talking about that one more in another image deconstruct. Yeah, absolutely. It was one of my, my favourite images to create and it was very personal. So yesterday I talked about you know making photographs that mean something for the people that are in them and that's what I absolutely love to do so when I'm working with my clients what I like to ask them is you know is there anything special um, that you would like to create throughout your shoot and that's during the conversations leading up to the session so it's not so much about you know at during the shoot but it's getting to know your clients and for me, um, I've, I've you know, created such wonderful relationships with a lot of my clients over the years. So when they come back, I know their story. Um, and you know what, it doesn't always have to be a, a painful story that we create these images based on. Um, you know, the, the heart and wings image, um, you know, that, that wasn't necessarily a sad story. It was just creating something that meant something to the family um, in terms, and it was based on their grandmother who had sadly passed. So it was, it was something special to make them smile at when they look at it, knowing that, you know, she was always there looking over them. Um, but yeah, it's talking to them, communicating, asking them how would they like, you know, their photo shoot to go. Um, and what length do you use to make this heart? Does it really matter? Well, pool noodles are about, well, actually, the length of these, they're about one and a half metres long, but these ones here were 1480 in mil, uh, millimetres. So I've just cut them in half, 740, and um, you can see I'm using a lot of tape here just to make sure that it stays nice and, and, and strong and it won't come apart as I start to, to bend these two pieces down to the point. Um, but yeah, um, where was I going with that question? I can't remember. Uh, that was the length. Oh yes, so about one and a half meters. But ultimately, when I'm making a prop and I want to put a baby in it, if you have a look at this, um, you know, I can put my elbow and my hand in here from one side to the other, and that is the same sort of method that I use to gauge the size of any props that I buy. Um, and you could measure that so you know roughly how long or how wide that's going to be. So if I do that, 
to there, it's about 40 centimetres. So anywhere from 35 to 40 centimetres, you're going to be able to create something around the right size. I saw somebody's written there, their notebook is filling up. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, we've got somebody who's asked, so if you don't have plaster since we're in lockdown, yep. could you use anything else, like fabrics maybe? You could use material, absolutely. But you know what? Everything is available online right now. So I'm, you know, I'm a big sh online shopper because I don't like going out into the shops anyway. Um, I have been preparing myself for this social distancing thing for quite some time. But um, yeah, if you can... If you can order something like this online, go for it. If you like to paper mache, um, you can find some great recipes online for how to make your own clay with, um, what was it, corn flour, baking soda, and something else was another recipe that I found recently. Yeah, we've got um, someone here who said that they do paper craft with the kids and use flour, water, with strips of newspaper. Um, Perfect. And it hardens like plaster. So. Yeah, amazing. As long as whatever you are making is strong and sturdy and it's not going to break when it comes to making, you know, props and things like that, so it's safe at all times, you, um, you must sort of go through that thought process of how am I going to create something that is going to be strong and sturdy. tape once it sticks to itself. <laughs> I'm giving it a really good pull here. All right, I've got some, how many we got watching today? You guys are kind of... Um, 234 today. Holy smokes, hi. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Now we've had lots of people asking over the past couple of days where to find the videos, how, how do I go back and uh, look for different things. So hop into the videos tab um, and you can see all the live broadcasts there. We've also set up a playlist on the Kelly's YouTube channel uh, where you can find all of the lives that we've done here in the group. Um, but also use the search field and you can yeah. uh, find everything in there as well. Absolutely, and under announcements, if you go to the announcements in the group, there is lots of things there. Um, there's also how to to enter to possibly get a one-on-one, -on -one, two-hour online mentoring session with me. I'm going to draw the um, the person randomly. Oh, that is a good idea. Wow. Who said that, Cindy? Egg cartons broken down oh, in water yes. and glue. That perfect. would be perfect. PVA glue is also another thing, like the kids' school glue that we've all made a million things of slime out of for our kids. I don't know about you guys, but I hated the slime phase. It drove me nuts. I found slime everywhere. And then people made this, had this wonderful idea to start adding different things to slime. I came home and there was polystyrene beans everywhere out of the bean bag at home because they thought that they could add that to the slime. Yeah, not a good idea. Okay, so that looks pretty strong. So this is where we can test it. test it. I did good. That was better than my first attempt. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to clamp this now again here so I can attach this side together. These are great if you don't have a spare set of hands, but again, kids are fantastic helpers when they, when they think they're going to get something in return. A little bribery. Any more questions? Pop them into the comments, please. I love, I love all your questions. Keeps me... Um, Emma Baker says, my seven, seven-year-old is watching too and just said, Hey, Mum, Kelly Brown is a pretty epic, isn't she? <laughs> I love your kid, Emma. <laughs> How's the school holidays going, kids? You getting bored yet? It's, well, it's school holidays now. I know you've been off school and being homeschooled. I should probably ask the parents that question. How's the homeschooling going? <laughs> and Kelly, what kind of clamps are those? 
These are just from the hardware. They're like a multi-purpose grip. Um, that yeah, like a, any type of hardware store. They weren't very expensive. You can get cheaper ones, um, but they are excellent to have as a spare set of hands. And somebody suggested here, could you just use the pool noodle as is without covering it with anything? Well, you could. It just doesn't look very pretty. But then you'd have to kind of think about how you would get it together. Yeah. Um, I have tried previously to use hot glue. <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> um, so when you are kind of thinking about what materials you're going to use and the surface that you're going to have um, a baby attached to, I mean, you could leave it like this and you could seriously, every time you go to use it, create a different way on decorating it. Even ripping off, um, if, you get, if you have like an old bed sheet, an old cotton bed sheet, rip off strips and tie them around and then have the tassels and the ties come around the outside. But jump onto Pinterest, not right now, but jump, right now you're busy. jump onto Pinterest and have, um, have a look at all of the different ways that you can decorate garlands and wreaths because um, there's some really amazing ideas on there. It's got me excited for Christmas, which is forever away. But when so, I look, oh, no, you're right. Go for it. Well, when I looked at the heart ones um, on there, they were actually decorated beautifully, and it got me thinking about all the different ways that we could start planning and creating content to share, to advertise for Valentine's Day next year. So lots of people here with kids at home. Um, <laughs> three weeks of isolation here. School is staying home for term two. Oh wow! Oh, but there's plenty to do around the house. Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. You know, I reckon this is going to be such a great way for kids to learn from business owners like us. You know, um, how to be resourceful, how to stay strong, how to stay focused, how to survive in tough times like our kids are going to come out of this learning resilience from us and obviously you know how I mean I mean if you remember when we were growing up if you're anywhere near my age or older like there was no internet I think there was like two TV channels in Australia <laughs> um, we were always outside playing finding something to to do and I think this is where our kids will learn how to, to be a little bit more like, you know, like us when we were growing up. Oh, wow, look at this. Okay, so that's nice and strong. Now, I've done two because I want to create something with a little bit of height here. And um, I'm going to join these two together. Whoop. Not clumsy. <laughs> that's awesome. Where do you get your inspiration from for your DIYs? Well, I suppose... What's your process? It, where do you go? Where do you look? It's just a matter of kind of coming up with a concept, an idea, and then visualising it. And, yeah, going on to Pinterest, places like that, and then having a look at, um, you know, different materials that you could use to create, I suppose, different pieces, different structures. All right, so I'm having a look here. One is slightly bigger than the other, so I'm going to put it on the top. I mean, I'm going to put this, the smaller one on the top, and I'm going to line up the, the bit there as much as I can. All righty. So I'm just going to put some tape around here now, and then I'm going to start plastering. We've got some more questions? Well, there are lots of questions flying through. Great. Okay, so I'm just going to pop back up here. Your lives are beautiful. What camera do you use for your lives? It's we actually use a iPad. program called Wirecast. Oh, program? Um, I thought they were like, what camera? Yeah, and the cameras are a iPad Pro and a iPhone. So lots of technical, not so technical stuff going on in the background here. Um, what background is this? I love it. Oh, behind me? Yeah. This is one of Jade Gayo's from Shades of Jade, one of her beautiful um, material canvases. So it's nice and soft. Well, 
Will you only plaster the outside of the noodle? I'm guessing, would you do anything else after you've plastered? Yeah, just around the outside because I wouldn't have this hanging. I don't need a bottom in it because it's always going to be on, on the ground or on a canvas and I'm going to fill it obviously with some supports to keep the baby positioned in there nicely. My husband's going to stop me, uh, ban me from watching your videos because I keep on buying more from Amazon each time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to hide the boxes and act like I've already had, had the supplies. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> um, uh, somebody here has missed the beginning. What type of tape is it that you're using there? This is just a gaff tape. It's called cloth tape, general purpose cloth tape. Um, so it's, it's very sticky. If it sticks to itself, like if it sort of folds over and sticks to itself, it's very hard to unstick. But it is, being a cloth tape, it's really strong. So it's just going to help hold these pieces in place before I start plastering. Uh, Roxa is amazed because 10 minutes and you made yourself a heart-shaped prop. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, growing up, I crafted a lot. I, um, I used to have to walk to my dad's work after school and he would always sit me up with, and I'm not a very good drawer, but he would always sit me up with, you know, pieces of paper and, and pencils to keep myself entertained. And I, he would tell me what, like give me something, an idea of what I had to draw. So then I had to use my imagination to draw something. Anyway, he always laminated them and he made them into placemats which was always really fun. So we would eat dinner, breakfast on these laminated sheets of paper that I would just draw on. And um, there was birds, there was lots of things. Uh, Sharon asks, have you ever had a concept slash idea turn hair shaped? Oh, all the time, Sharon. You're all the time. <laughs> a lot. A lot. And that's the thing, like I could go, yep, nah, didn't work and throw this in the bin and go, see you tomorrow. <laughs> um, but that's where Stay tuned. I think the, I think what we have to, you know, remember is that we learn from doing stuff like this. Um, when you come up with an idea or a concept, you know, try to put as much thought behind how you are going to create it as you possibly can so that you're not wasting materials, not wasting time. So this, are you going to use this, so somebody says that they're a bit confused, are you going to use this to put a baby in or are you going to put a blanket over the top and then put the baby in? Oh, do you know what? I'm going to fill it with curly furs, I'm going to put, um, yeah, some nice sort of soft walls in here things like that. Um, I'll grab some stuff once I've plastered it, just to kind of give you an idea of how I will photograph it. Just want one more bit of tape and then I'm ready. And Pamela's supposed to be cleaning right now, but you're a great distraction. Oh, cleaning's terrible. <laughs> it's so overrated. Yeah, you know what, it's been fun doing this with you guys here in the group, having these, doing these lives and coming up with some different things. Because I can tell you, I'd just be sitting at home doing, you know, something. I don't know what I'd be doing if I wasn't coming up with, with creative ways to keep, you know, to keep sort of putting content into the group. All right. I think you've done all right there. Um, I've got a question here, I can't see who it is, but um, do you feel like clients ever question the plastered props versus your wooden props? Well, not really. I think, I think it's the way that you finish them and the way that you have them on display. A great way for me to show my clients how I use different props and things like that is to have them on display, either in a print on the wall or have them printed in an album that I sell, things like that. And it gives them ideas of what it could potentially look like. And that's the thing, when they come into your studio, they don't always understand completely how you are going to put their baby inside something. So I think it's always a, a great idea to have your different things um, you know, on display that's gonna help them. All right, let's start. Now, when you are using some plaster, 
you've got to have warm water. So like I said, my, my plaster, these come in a roll and you just cut them into strips, but you have to um, soak them in warm water first. So I actually filled this up with really hot water before we started. It has cooled off a little bit. Um, so we might have to warm it up shortly. But yeah, you basically just submerge and this, like I said, it does get messy. So you could start coming around this way or start basically just going over the top and coming around. But I always like to try and keep it, you know, as smooth as I possibly can. Because you can see how it kind of gathers there. And for those who are just joining us, how many pool noodles is that that you've used? Uh, two. So two cut in half to yep. make uh, two separate halves that you've then combined together. Norse. Did I just say Norse? Norse. Norse. So I'm hoping I've got enough plaster. <laughs> <laughs> now somebody's asked, uh, where is it here? I think it was Stephanie. Um, uh, could you make a curly layer? for a craft video. Oh my God. You okay. asked them to ask. So that's probably one for mum, <laughs> <laughs> but we can't get her up here at the moment. She's at home. Let me do some research and see exactly how difficult that is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, things like that, I'm not, oh gosh, I don't know. I've never tried that. I've never tried felting. I don't have the patience for knitting. I've tried it. I love this stuff. And Carol's just said, these videos are the best thing on the internet right now. <laughs> she doesn't even miss Netflix. <laughs> I'm getting a little over Netflix. I'm sick of seeing the bloody Tiger King. I haven't watched it yet. And, um, but yeah, every time I go on there, it's the first thing that they're advertising to me. So I have been catching up on all of my editing. Um, I've even started editing some photos that I took a while ago that I haven't really done anything with, sort of more creative ones. So I'm just kind of sitting there at home. I sit with a glass of wine and I just edit and, and see what happens. And those strips that you're using, what are they and where do you get them from? Okay, so this is just plaster um, on a plaster that you would have if you'd broken your arm. So they come in a roll. You can buy them at the art and craft store. And I think they're around $3 a packet. So I'm just working my way around here. Let me just rub that plaster in. <clears throat> the idea with this particular prop is to shoot it from above. So you get that full shape of the love heart in there. You know, I'm plastering it, but there's no reason why. I mean, I love it white, obviously, because it's going to be nice and versatile. I can cover it with different materials, wools, things like that, to give it a different look and feel when I use it for different shoots. So I'm not always using it the exact same way, but if you wanted to paint it a particular color, you could. You can grab, you can find really great textured um, pastes and things like that that you can add, add to things like this. Okay, somebody's just asked if we can show the close-up of the strips. I'll grab one of those and we can have a look. Yeah, good idea. So it's just like the same plaster if you had broken your arm that they would put on your arm. It's like a plaster of paradise, a paradise, <laughs> plaster of Paris. So I, what I'm doing is dipping it in warm water. So it just came, came with really simple instructions, cut into strips, um, dip in warm water and then apply. So very, very um, easy to use, very messy. So I've got a couple of garbage bags down here just to sort of stop it from going onto the table here. All right. 
right, so I've still got to do the point down there, but I'll hold it up for you. And it's starting to look exactly how I wanted it to. And it's nice and strong as well. I've still got a few strips left, so I'm going to keep working my way around. Cover Once you get the first layer on, then you just need to come around and, and go back over any sort of areas that um, you might have missed. Yeah, and a personal preference, you know, whether or not you particularly like this type of texture, but like I said, you could paint over the top of it. Um, you can grab, you know, different sort of modeling clays. You could go over the top of it. You could paper mache over the top of something like this to create even different texture. But what I love about this particular plaster is that it's, um, it's so easy to use and, and it gives you a really good coverage. So if you are just tuning in now and you missed the first part, you can catch that in the videos section of the... I'm hoping it stayed there, did it? I'm hoping so too. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what happened. I'm troubleshooting in the background here, so fingers crossed we'll be able to um, get everything back to back to normal. But I did realise um, in using your phone, we've gone from a um, landscape to a portrait video, so splicing oh. it together should be fun for me later. Yay! <laughs> It's great, but we've got 146 people watching Holy today. smokes. Well, thank you for joining us. We apologise for the issues that we had. All right, so now I've got a few sort of pieces left here. I've got quite a bit. So the idea, like I said, is to kind of shoot it from above. Um, so I need to make the top part sort of as smooth as I possibly can and I will be filling it with support so I don't need to worry too much about how it looks down on the inside as long as it is nice and supportive and I've got mo support, I mean sort of structurally strong. As long as I've covered all the main areas, now what I need to do, I might just put one more here and here, is then I'm going to come around and I'm going to place it more around the top there to give it a bit of a smoother the bottom here. I find this so therapeutic. <laughs> the only bit I don't like is the clean up afterwards. Um, Garrett, could you come pull my sleeves up, please? Oh, I can. Taz. Okay. All right. So I hope you guys have gone and filled in the entry, the form to possibly spend a couple of hours with me online if you want to. We can talk about anything and everything. Um, your business, shooting, lighting, exposure, posing. Not that I can work with a real baby at the moment or anyone can, but we can talk about, you know, different struggles that you might have working with babies in that instance. I'm just trying to smooth this plaster out, make sure I haven't got any sort of holes where the fabric is. I'm loving this texture. OK, 
Kelly, do you think this will be large enough for twins? Oh, depending on how big they are, but if you were making one for twins, I would probably make it a little bit bigger. I would probably make, um, so I cut uh, one pool noodle into two to make both sides and they were about 740 mil long. If I was doing twins, I'd probably make each length about a meter long. Uh, so you might have to get a couple of extra pool noodles. You might need four, but they're like $2. I paid two, $2 Australian. So the last time I made this one, I bought a heap of pool noodles, not knowing how many I would need. And, um, and I had some left over, which was fantastic. But for two bucks, I mean, it's such a cheap, a cheap way to make something. And the plaster rolls, how, ma how much of that have you used? So this is three rolls and I'm almost through all three rolls and they were like $3.99 a roll, I believe, from the art and craft store. You can get different brands. So I've just gone with the cheapest one. So yeah, two two dollars. So four dollars for the pool noodles. And what do we got? Three times four. That's twelve dollars. So we're up to about sixteen dollars. And a roll of gaff tape. How much is that? I wasn't counting. No. How much is a roll of gaff tape? Oh, that, roll of gaffer, that tape. Five about five dollars. So what did I say? Are we up to? Hang on. I said 16. four, and I said twelve. Sixteen. <laughs> about five dollars. So we're up to about twenty-one dollars, <laughs> Australian. Um, so obviously the prices for different materials is going to vary all over the world. Yep. But for me, 21 bucks and I've created something that's a little different, a little unique. And I'm going to be able to get quite a few different looks out of it in terms of covering it with different materials once I'm finished, shooting it exactly like this, more like a sculpture. And it's been fun. Good Lord. Alrighty. Where am I up to? And I know you might not be able to get out and get pool noodles. I'm not even sure if you can buy them online, but I'm guessing you can. You, I think you can buy pretty much anything online these days. But like I said, jump onto um, Pinterest because some of the ideas on how to decorate wreaths and garlands will get you very inspired of what you can create. Something that's different and unique, make you stand out from, from the billions of photos that are shared on the internet every day. Kelly, would you say that that's heavy, that prop? No. Well, it's solid now. It's got a good weight because of the plaster, but pool noodles are so light. And um, and about how many layers do you think that you've added to that? So I went around once and I went this way, all the way around. And then, and I kind of overlapped them as I went around. But now I'm just basically going over the top of it to give me that nice, smooth sort of surface that I can shoot on. But yeah, if I was to put a baby in this now, it is nice and strong, it's nice and sturdy, it's not going to break. I'm obviously going to have some nice soft materials and supports on the inside to keep the baby comfortable and safe, which is always, you know, when I'm making anything, uh, a huge priority. And do you think you're going to paint it? Well, I actually think I'm going to leave it white because I can cover it with different types of materials and then I'll use it a few times white and then I might come back and paint it again at a later stage just to sort of give it a bit of a fresher look. But yeah, you can, um, and that's, that's what I do love about, you know, kind of thinking about the different props and stuff I use in my studio. How versatile are they? How many different looks can I get out of each prop? Um, how can I 
change it after a while as well because you know we all get sick of using the same stuff over and over again which is why our bank balances tend to deplenish when it comes to buying props so you can see perfect is that good that looks great it does hey and it's nice and solid as it's drying and it doesn't take very long to dry that stuff, does it? No. So I'm going to grab some stuff in a minute. But yeah, clay, DIY clay, look up the ingredients online you might have a few things in your pantry paper mache works well I did a doozy there, trying to get these bit of frayed bits out. Look at this. <laughs> it's sticky. All right, I think we're almost done. I've got one sheet left. <laughs> and being the top up here, I might just add it back up here to give it this smoother look. I'm pretty happy everywhere else. You could use a bit of the uh, fall off, but um, I love that sort of plastered clay look. It's got a nice sort of natural kind of texture to it. One bit left. Let me have a look from the other side, see if I need to add it anywhere. So I've just given Kelly a view there so she can actually ah. see what you can see. Hi, everyone. <laughs> we apologise that we lost connection before. We got booted off. Now that's a pretty crappy piece of um, plaster right there, actually. It's a bit chunky. It's got some hard lumps in it. So to finish my surface off, I'm actually not going to use it. So I'm going to dry, wash my hands off here with this excess stuff. This is drying very quickly. And Kelly, is this something you could sand potentially? Oh, I haven't tried that, but you could totally sand something like this. Is there anything you can't do, lady? Oh yes, many things. <laughs> but I think that's the attitude, is that I'm just going to give it a go. Oh, you won't be surprised to actually ask that. That was Danielle. Ah. <laughs> Hello. So yeah, there's my prop that I've just finished making. And obviously it's a little dodgy around the outsides there. You could, you know, I'm trying to do this nice and quick just to show you guys. And I'll probably get some more plaster and continue to come around just to make it look um, a bit nicer later on. But what I'm gonna do here is grab another sheet of another garbage bag. Where'd I pop those? Actually, can I just have that towel? That's perfect. So what I'm going to do here... Just to kind of give you a bit more of an idea... I'll get rid of that mess under there. It's just a white towel I'm going to pop it on. to line something like this I'm just going to grab some towels from over here to pop a baby in then I'm probably going to kind of fill the bottom of it with the towels to give it the support that I need 
can I get you to grab me a baby? I think she's in that first cupboard just down there. I need to think about where I'm going to place her head. Yeah, that, that one. And I believe she might be supporting a little outfit you made yourself. <laughs> I did in one of my other lives. Okay. So whenever I place a baby in a prop, I always want to make sure that I put the, um, the head down first and then, um, and then the bottom. So I'm just going to grab one of these wraps that have got a bit of texture on them. So I've got a space for the bottom to go down into and I've got a space to support up underneath the head there. The outfit doesn't really go with this, but, and then we could potentially just kind of drape that down there. Now I would be shooting this directly from above, but if I was gonna place my baby in here, you know, you could wrap them. I'd have them on that bit of a diagonal Just hold it up a little bit. Oh, she falling. <laughs> Let me put my hands in underneath. That is cool. So I haven't, oh, my hands are falling. I haven't actually filled it too much, but just to give you an idea, that's kind of how I would have a baby positioned in here and use, you know, different things to kind of line it and soften it and stuff like that. Upside down, Miss Jane, for me. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's it. I just made a new prop for the studio. It's still a little wet. Um, I'll have to wash all of these things. But yeah, that's my heart, my love heart. And it's cost all up. I haven't even used a whole roll of gaffer tape, so I probably wouldn't even, you know, calculate that into the costs. But all up, it's cost me $16 Australian. And if you have a look at the current exchange rate, it's not great. <laughs> awesome. All right. Our apologies again for the, um, the broadcast there dropping out. We hope that um, it wasn't too disruptive. There we go. And um, yeah, thanks for joining me. Now, tomorrow is Good Friday. So I always, you know, go live here in the group Monday to Friday. Um, I was thinking about coming into the studio tomorrow, but being a public holiday and Good Friday here, we, uh, we decided that Garrett needs a break. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a video this afternoon and tomorrow's topic was how to calm the parents' farm. <laughs> Don't know why we called it that. It was late in the afternoon. It was when we came up with it, but it's about how to keep your parents calm and create a wonderful environment that's relaxing and enjoyable for them. Because when you do that, that's going to have a huge impact on how your session flows and also the baby and how they react to the new environment that they're being brought into. So I'm gonna do a little video this afternoon. I'm, I'm gonna record it, so I'll put it into the group tomorrow at the same time for you to watch if you wanna watch that. But yeah, it'll be all about how to you know, create a very relaxing and comfortable environment for the parents so that it you know, has that flow on effect um, for the entire session and the baby. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. It was a little bit of fun. Um, I'm excited I get to use something when I'm allowed to shoot again. And yeah. And apologies again for the interruption. One of the most popular broadcasts that we've done in a little while and it just decided to drop out. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm not going to be live again until Tuesday morning. And Tuesday morning, I'm going to announce um, straight up at 10.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, my time, in Brisbane, Australia. I'm going to announce the person who's going to, to get a two-hour mentoring session with me on anything and everything that they want. Um, I'm going to do it over the next couple of months. So it's not just a one-off thing. I'll do it again next month. 
and all you have to do is go to the announcements, you'll see a video of my ugly face again telling you what to do and a link that you can fill in a form to, um, to enter. But basically I'm going to go live and I'm going to hit a button and it's going to choose a number randomly and then Garrett's going to tell me which person was that number in terms of in what order you registered um, for, for that. But yeah, if you know other people in the group, get them to, to submit as well because, um, you know, it would be a wonderful, um, it's wonderful for everybody to be a part of, I think. It's just wonderful. But anyway, I'm going to go. I want you to have a wonderful Easter weekend if you are celebrating Easter. And be safe. Stay home over the long weekend. Enjoy this time with your family. Start thinking about all of the different ways that you can create and, you know, get your business to where you want it to be so you can hit the ground running when we get through this. Please take care.